Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Last Edit Podcast, a podcast on film starring yours truly, Silver Hawkins and the great Citizen Sleeve. Hello there. As uh, regular listeners will be aware, we are currently in the process of taking a dive into uh, the filmography of the Coen brothers, and we are now on to um, the two films that are basically broadly accepted as, as their lower quality tier, which is the first one of which is uh, the late, um, sorry, no, Intolerable Cruelty, uh, starring George Clooney and Catherine Cedar jones uh, This was, this film is a bit of a bastard child because it was a script that had sort of bounced around Hollywood for years until eventually it landed with the Coens and they sort of revised it um, and then made it into Intolerable Cruelty. And I think it shows uh, in the film that, that it, did, it does have that that feeling of sort of having been in development hell, for, which happens to, to, to Hollywood scripts every once in a while. Um, it's credited to four different screenwriters um, as the, at the time of release, um, including which includes the Coen brothers, Joel and Ethan. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it has bounced around a bit. It is also, I mean, it's definitely... Um, I would say the the, mo the most shallow film they've done up to this point. There's not a lot of depth to it. Um, it's it's still fairly breezy, but um, but it is really just a, a traditional, uh, somewhat traditional uh, romantic comedy. Uh, plays it fairly straight throughout. Uh, there are a couple of twists along the way, but um, but really it is fairly formulaic in that sense. Um, but it's still like they 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 still have a really great cast. There's still like the script has a couple of singers in there. Um, there are some memorable moments. There are some some decent laughs, uh, and the kind of chemistry between, especially uh, George Clooney and Catherine Cedar Jones, really crackles. Um, and and as I've as I've said before, like I don't think uh, Cedar Jones has ever looked more beautiful than she does, in, or radiant than she, than, than she does in this film. Like the, she plays her eroticism so well, and especially opposite Clooney, uh, that I, I I don't think I've seen her do that better than than, than she does here. Uh, well, I hadn't seen it before, and I think I know why. Because I just don't think it's quite my type of film. Now, I right. I don't dislike romantic comedies as such, but they need to have more of a heart for me. Like, my favourite romantic comedy is When Harry Met Sally, for obvious reasons. I think it's a lot of people's. But it's not a bad film by any stretch of the imagination, but in my opinion, it's definitely the worst of the Coens that I've ever seen. Now, that that's, you know, not setting the bar ridiculously low, because the Coens make most things very good anyway. I want to start with the positives before I move on to what I consider to be the negatives of this. The cast, once again, is fantastic. Uh, um, a, a great dual pairing, as you said. Cita Jones and Clooney have an excellent chemistry as Miles and Marilyn. Um, she's about as, as uh, stoic a bitch as you can get in this. You know, constantly marrying men and divorcing them for their money. And Clooney is this vacuous, um, materialistic lawyer who doesn't know what he wants in life and has got everything he wants and then meets Eta Jones and, you know, they kind of hit it off to some extent. The ensemble in general, everyone from Cedric the Entertainer to uh, Richard Jenkins as, as, um, as uh, Marilyn's lawyer. There's so many awesome characters within this and character actors. So once again, you've got some lovely performances, some nice side performances. There's some nice music tracks in there, as you said. I like the titles, really like the titles. They're a touch um, uh, Monty Python reminiscent, just in the way that they're, they're right. staged yeah, and yeah. set up. Uh, a bit bolder, obviously, because it's it's more about um, love and losing love and being betrayed and all this stuff. But I like really like the titles. Now, it's uneven, to say the it least. It is. And that's one of the biggest problems with this script and the pacing of it. It's very... I w well, it, no, it is. It is quite tropey to a typical romantic comedy. Not There are some which aren't like this, and they're the ones with the heart that I enjoy more. For the first half, maybe first three quarters of this film, the characters are absolute bastards, most of them. There's a few you like, but most of them are... 
as I said, with, with Clooney, vacuous, materialistic. They're out for themselves. They want money. Beverly Hills, they're, you know, into each other as they meet. Um, they, they, they've got no centre, no um, heart or well-being for others. And that's difficult with a romantic comedy. But there are a lot of romantic comedies that start with those tropes, start with those type of characters. Then the latter half of the film, more of a heart starts developing between a couple of the characters and there's a, the comedy kind of becomes a bit warmer than it did in, in, that, in that prior half. And that's, again, very typical of a, 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 an obvious romantic comedy, especially at that era, I think. 2003, this came out. I think late 90s, early 2000s, there was quite a lot of comedies that had that feel. But it's interwoven with the Coens. So there's good dialogue, there's excellent scenes but you don't see the kind of cinematography or no. i mean the only real technique that they use is a, again a very typical comedic tool which is the zoom in when someone's laughing at a joke or something comedic's going on there's a couple of really funny scenes in it uh, you laughed a little bit more than me you could probably sense that but there are still some moments where i thought yeah this is really really cool my biggest issue with it is just how uneven it is. It, it, you know, as you said, the, the script is, is four different people, including the Coens. You can tell. And probably more, just uncredited. Uncredited. Uh, so you can tell, you can tell that, because I think some characters are stronger than others. And normally there's more of a balance in that with the Coen films. Most characters are bloody strong. With this, I think a few aren't. Um, and the way things are set up and tied together at the end is all bloody pretty obvious, apart from one big twist that I didn't see coming, and you said you, know, you didn't see coming when it actually happened. So I did enjoy it, but it's got a lot of flaws, and it's certainly, for me, the worst of the Coen's catalogue that I've seen. Just uh, just to start us off with, with the synopsis, like it is, it, it's about um, a Beverly Hills divorce attorney called Miles Massey, played by George Clooney, and um, as you said, like a gold digging uh, woman, um, Marilyn, played by um, Catherine Zeta Jones, uh, and uh, and so the movie st opens with um, with Marilyn catching her husband Rex Rexroth uh, cheating on her um, using the private investigator Gus Petch, um, played by Cedric the Entertainer, and. Uh, Rex then goes to Miles Massey for, uh, in order to um, to make sure that Marilyn doesn't get anything in the divorce, uh, and uh, Miles manages to win that trial, which he then sort of pits, but he falls sort of head over heels in love with um, with Marilyn in the process, and then that sort of uh, begets the conflict that then uh, sustains the film from there. Um, we should just on. cover the setup first, though, because there's a little setup, the very start, which is Jeffrey Rush um, plays this TV producer, and he comes home one day, uh, called Donovan Donnelly, I think, comes home one day to find his wife has cheated with this uh, they, pool repairman. And he tries to take sees the the, car, the van outside, which uh, the van outside, is a little yeah. odd given that he doesn't have a pool. He doesn't have a pool, exactly. So he comes in, he, he doesn't catch them in the act with the beds all over the place, and it's pretty bloody obvious that she's cheated. And so he get, takes a gun out, starts shooting at them, they run outside, they drive away, they kind of crash into each other, and he tries to take photos as evidence, and she, the wife, goes to see Massey, and that I think that seems brilliant, because he's like, and what actually happened was that he didn't think this happened, and the gun was actually yours. And in fact, if you'll, he actually was going out with the, the, the cheating with with that guy. It wasn't you. And she's like, "What the hell?" Because he's just making it up on the spot and trying to frame it um, in a completely different perspective so that she wins. And she does win, and that uh, and takes everything from him, from yeah. um, Donovan. And that's the kind of setup for them. What we come to with what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that that scene is particularly important for like for for like the overall it, it does sort of establish no, no, no. What, what what eventually goes on for for a twist uh for what pays off with the twist later on um, i mean i mentioned it really but uh but yeah it, it starts off with with that and then from there we get introduced to Marilyn, uh or rather to to uh to rex having his uh 
this night out with um with the choo choo girl the excellent edward herman who is you know rest in peace wonderful yeah. character actor um, yes great really is and lo loads so, of excellent things so yeah i mean i i agree with you it, it is it is very uneven um I think there are still a couple of Cohen staples that work, like some of the side characters. Gus Petch uh, has some really, really great dialogue. Uh, you want tact, you call it tactician. Uh, really yeah. solid line, uh, the way he sells that. I nailed him. I nailed him. Nail his ass. Nail his ass. Nail that, his ass. That's his catchphrase. Yeah, I, nail, I nailed his ass. Um, there's like, there's the scene, the initial sit down uh, in the divorce negotiation between... Um, Marilyn and Rex, where um, where Miles is playing opposite opposite uh, Freddie, um, George Clooney, and um, oh, God damn it. Richard Jenkins. Richard yeah. Jenkins, yeah. Uh, with um, did you forget about Kirshner? Uh, <laughs> which Do you want is a pastry. That, Have that, a pastry. Yeah, and the Kirshner line is really sort of the one that a lot of people still remember and quote from the film. Uh, Have you forgotten Kirshner? Have you forgotten Kirshner? Uh, which drives Freddie nuts. Um, because of course Kirsner is in Kentucky, so it doesn't apply. Uh, mm. But uh, but yeah, I I mean there are there are some singers in the script. There's also the restaurant scene between um, between Miles and Marilyn when he asks her out when when they have the uh, the snappy dialogue where they both quote poetry, and uh, and he gives her the line um, or he feeds her the line. Um, oh, are you a predator? Oh, Mr. Massey, you have no idea. The way uh, Cedar Jones delivers on that, also, really, and he really really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> really great. Um, so, so there are there are a couple of the Cohen staples that really that, that still keep it up and still make me go. It's still a decent film. Like like mm. we we Cohen is still top tier for a lot of other directors, but it's still it's still good a decent um, contribution to the genre. I think. Um, and yeah, I just I just get a kick out of the performances. So I get a kick out of uh, George Clooney playing. Instead of the hair, it's uh, it's the teeth with Miles. Um, yeah. as sort of the, the the same, but the same vanity as uh, as Ulysses in uh, in O Brother. Um, and the way he, I mean, he's he's a, he's great in this. Even 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 as it's a middling movie, you get the speech he gives at. At the lawyers' convention, uh, for the convention for divorce lawyers in Las Vegas, um, where he talks about love, uh, I think he delivers really, really well on that. Um, the, uh, you, you mentioned, I mean, the cinematography is mostly forgettable in this one, yeah. especially especially coming off the heels of the man who wasn't there. Um, there isn't anything particularly memorable. I think the most memorable sequence in terms of staging is probably the divorce proceeding the actual trial uh between yeah. marilyn and rex when they call the bellen uh hein bon heinz kaus von espe um i'm glad you said that yeah <laughs> i just called him yeah. the baron yeah with his uh with his uh, little dog yeah his uh his schnauzer or whatever it was yeah um yeah uh like that—that that is probably the most memorable stage stage sequence in the film. Um, also, pretty funny with the deliberately sort of hyperbolic. Um, I'm going to allow that from the judge on every single objection <laughs> from uh, from Freddie. Uh, objection, you're under strangling the witness. I'm going to allow that. Yeah. yeah. Um, like that. That's a nice comedic punchline. Uh, yeah, I just and 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 the movie is sort of it does seem to be going in a really formulaic way and then it suddenly it twists in on in on itself and it suddenly turns into what 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 is sort of vaguely reminiscent of some, some of the noir plots that the coens have toyed with in the past yeah. where all of a sudden one thing becomes something else entirely and you start to see dots connected throughout throughout the film yeah yeah uh that are there that you then pick up on which I think works, um, and yeah, the the movie does ultimately end with uh, with the happy ending where Miles and uh, and Marilyn make up and and get that steaming hot kiss over the conference table in in the meeting room, but uh, but I think that twist really helps helps elevate the film. Um, I, I think you're more than right. I think without that twist, it's far more formulaic and, and it's yeah. a far weaker film. I mean, so. The, the Baron who's given evidence, who's been brought in by Miles, basically says, 
that she was asking all of uh, about all the guests in the hotel he worked at for silly rich people who who she could dupe and steal their money from and get you know as, as she tried to do and he was and the concierge evidence, yeah yeah, and that F evidence, in essence, allows Rex to win the case, uh, Miles to win the case on behalf of Rex. So Catherine Zeta-Jones, uh, Marilyn decides that she has another plan in mind, and she goes to Miles' office with her new husband-to-be, uh, Billy Bob Thornton, who essentially plays like an oil baron's son, is like a very uh, uh, Texan cowboy almost. Yeah. Um, just trying to look for the name. Howard D. Doyle is the character, called Howard. And so she's she's obviously, you know, duping us again. Um, but she goes to see Miles to almost kind of show off and, and kind of talk and kind of put it in his face and talk about the uh the Massey prenup, which is apparently the most solid prenup ever written into law in that yeah. in that state or the country or whatever. And in the end, it turns out while they are sat at a bar um in Vegas, that on the TV they see a soap opera, and in that soap opera is but Billy Bob Thornton's character, obviously not called Howard, playing a doctor. And I was happy to see Bruce Campbell yeah. as the other character in that scene as well. And they click and realise, ah, shit, we've been duped. She's brought in, she's staged, she's not only staged um, a husband-to-be, she's staged a wedding, she's hired yeah. things out, created this whole false scenario, and there's this bit in the wedding between... And there's the six, six months... Six months gap. Six uh, months later, yeah. yeah after, the, after the wedding, is fake wedding as well. Um, and like... that bit where um, Billy Bob's Howard, fake Howard, at the wedding, when they've, um, you know, um, exchanged vows, eats the prenup with barbecue sauce. Yeah. Uh, you know, all this elaborate setup. And in the end, he's been duped again. And she does it all, of course, to get, to convince... Um miles that that she's off the market and that she's actually rich because she got all howard's money so that when yeah. she then tears up their prenup uh the idea is that she's doing it for him while he's actually the the wealthy party and so te yeah. her tearing up the prenup and him allowing it is basically uh dooming him for for the divorce miles and marilyn's wedding in vegas is quite funny because you know they've had all we've seen all these elaborate yeah. weddings and all this kind of crap so far and then they go into a typical um, Vegas wedding Vegas venue chapel, yeah. With with a, a Scottish guy who's, uh, <laughs> who's swearing a lot. What and, the hell are you doing? And they um, and they and rent the kilts, yeah. They rent the kilts out, <laughs> get interrupted by bagpipe, a bagpipe player, um, and walking down the aisle behind them, and then go upstairs, um, um, have a love scene, and then that's it. You have this really cold separation again, where he's you know during that scene we see the prenup being ripped by Marilyn. And then next morning, she gets up and she's her cold, bitchy, gold-digging self again, much to uh, Miles' cigar, unfortunately. Um, and that's where the film kind of starts to end, really. Um, we start heading towards the uh, the face-off meeting at the end, I guess, after after we've had the, the Vegas wedding and he's realized about the Doctor. Uh, of course, we also get a couple of scenes with the senior partner at... Um... Oh, Miles's he's fantastic. Yeah. He might be my favorite character. <laughs> he's basically this, he looks like someone Absolutely who's Absolutely decrepit, him. yeah. Yeah, decrepit <laughs> old guy who, who calls him up to his office. He's, you know, tubes coming out of him, machines everywhere to keep him alive. And there's, there's, two, there's two or three scenes with him, but there's one in particular, which probably is my favorite moment in the film because it's a little bit horror. And that's just when he, um, the camera zooms a touch twice, I think, and he's got like pointed teeth, like he's a vampire or something. Right. Which you know, kind of. Yeah, I mean, there's. I mean, there, the are, there, are, there are two like genuine scenes with him, and then there's a nightmare sequence where, where Miles yeah, has where a he nightmare wakes up in about the night. him. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I think, is the one with the night with with the vampiric teeth. Um, yeah, I like that because, of course, that that's Miles basically seeing himself in the future, where yeah. as somebody who only exists, much like. Marilyn has her best friend who only sort of exists to marry and divorce other men and is completely and utterly alone as a result. Uh, Miles has his senior partner who, uh, for whom, who's basically just all about the casework and all about the, the winning, winning cases and winning, winning trials uh, in divorce court. And um, yeah, and, and so they both have some degree of anxiety there as well. 
uh, driving them. And, and yeah, and I think that's the fundamental part of those two characters, isn't it? They're both lost. Yeah. They see money and materialism uh, and ownership of things as a way out. They just do yeah. it in different ways. And yeah, I mean, Mar Marilyn keeps saying throughout the movie that that her goal is independence. Yeah. But then, when once you gain independence, what what then? Um, whereas, like Miles already has that. He already has the financial wealth and the and complete success. Uh, he is at the top of the mountain, but then, what what's the challenge from there? Like he yeah. said, yeah. initially Two cars, he said, he's got a yeah. jet. He's, initially yeah. he says his, his challenge then is to gain a like complete and total victory, which is what he then gets over Marilyn, uh, in in the Rex Roth case case. But even that doesn't satisfy him. Uh, like that's still just just another victory. I still don't have a sense of like fulfillment or or whatever. Um, I honestly think, like I said to you at the time, in a different dimension. And without the um, the payoff at the end where things are a bit happier, he is very, very like five or ten steps away from being Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. He's like he's like on the way to becoming that almost in an alternate dimension somewhere because he's that kind of character who doesn't really care about anything or anyone and is just in it for the materialism and then loses his way. And that's kind of what Bateman is at the start of that film. But Bateman's far more deadly, shall we say. Um and then we basically end up in the um, that final scene, really. Um, but there's a few scenes here and there before. Yeah, I mean they do but... they do ha end up um, on the uh, senior partner's insistence. Uh, they do end up hiring a hitman to hiring a hitman to Weezy kill, Joe, to is kill it? Marilyn. Yes, Weezy Joe uh, to kill uh, to kill Marilyn after um, Rex uh, or after Miles uh, learns that he's been duped um, because uh, the firm cannot stand for it. Uh, it, it it lives on the perception of its reputation. Um, so they they hire Weezy Joe, and um, Weezy Joe, of course, gets caught out by Marilyn, and then she offers him double for for killing Miles. And uh, <laughs> and we get the like probably the comedic high point of the film, which is Weezy Joe accidentally shooting himself when he tries to to reach for his asthma inhaler. Uh, he just inhale a four and shoots a gun in his mouth because he can't see. Yeah, speak. mistakenly yeah. takes his uses his gun and blows his his own brains out. Um, and you get uh, <laughs> George Clooney's sort of dim-witted Wheezy Joe <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty funny scene. Um, and and there that that's when the movie then sort of uh, culminates with with the final sort of sit down in the conference room. Yeah. And uh, and it's it's quite a nice scene. Um, we end up with uh, the lawyers opposite each other again. So um, Jenkins, Freddy, and uh, and Clooney's Massey, and then obviously you've got his partner. Oh, we should just mention Clooney's partner is like comic relief. He keeps crying at weddings all the time. Yeah, he's and he's his far par softer. Parale his paralegal, I would assume. Yeah, his paralegal. Yeah, and he's far stuff. softer and, and almost a bit more of a, a heart to what they're doing. If if they can have a heart in that situation, yeah. and then obviously Zeta Jones, Marilyn is there. And they basically come to the conclusion in the end um, that there's there's another prenup because the prenup was designed to exist after the wedding uh, has been nullified or whatever. No, no, it was. wasn't. Uh, there, it's that there's nothing in the Massey prenup that says it can't be signed after signed afterwards. the marriage. Yeah. And so she tears it up and then Freddie takes it, puts it in a suitcase, tries to run yeah. off and the paralegal runs <laughs> back to them. But they basically make up, um, finally show some trust and um and kiss and then we get to a, an entirely completely unnecessary scene that i just don't think was needed at all cedric the entertainer's gus now has a divorce based game show and i get it you've gone from finally coming full circle from the cynicism and, and the beverly hills divorce rates all this different stuff to two people in those situations uh, coming together despite their differences despite the hollowness but then you go right back to comedic over the top absolute come at me cynicism with this um yeah. game show laden with um you know divorce videos and all that stuff i just did not like the way that ended i didn't think it was needed i would have liked to have just ended on the kiss and then repeat the kind of titles that you started the film with i think that would have bookended it much more effectively I, I can understand that. I think I mean, I think you you are also correct that the film struggles a little tonally there, because you also get I mean, 
you get Miles' speech at the at the convention, and then immediately afterwards is when he goes to the bar and sees uh, Howard on the yeah. television and realizes that he's been duped by Marilyn. Uh, and so, so, so like the the romanticism of the um, of his speech immediately gets uh, subverted and uh, and sort of destroyed by by the reality of of her uh, of her scheme. Uh, and then you have that same similar dynamic at the end, where you get the the the, the romanticism of of their kiss and their and their union, and then you get the uh, the the divorce reality show hosted by by Gus Patch with divorce footage videos. Um, I I think it is uh, an element of of the of the Coen brothers abhorring sentimentality and abhorring that sort of schmaltzy. Uh, feel good stuff and and just sort of wanting to to throw that bit of cynicism in there for for comedic effect um i find it humorous um it does it didn't bother me the same way but i can i can definitely understand why uh, that perspective because it is it is tonally dissonant uh, yes. i think that that's accurate i do like I, you know, I, I get your point as well. With the, you know, there's there's many moments in the film, especially towards the end, when you have something romantic or, or something heartfelt, and it's in literally in, against in sharp relief with something that isn't. So the ebb and flow does not work properly, and and the end is a real big case in point. I just think there's so much bloody cynicism in the film anyway. There is even at the end, you're like. They're totally going to get divorced again, or you know Jenkins' t- character, um, Freddie's lawyer, has taken the the papers. It's you know that one kiss really. I think should have just ended it. That's, I think that's just I think that I that's completely right. But there is also the element of where the movie is set, because the movie is set in Beverly Hills, divorce country. Like yeah. it is, <laughs> which is like, I mean, uh, play is such an important part of every Cohen film, and it is also an extremely important part here where like Beverly Hills really sort of oozes through every every oh it does every yeah. scene uh from like uh from the tennis court where uh, where Miles is playing completely bored to uh to the swimming pool where Marilyn is uh tripping with her fellow friends um one of whom is sleeping with the other woman's husband without them yep. <laughs> them knowing. Uh, which, Everyone uh, sleeping with everybody. Which I think was played off really, really well. Uh, like you, you catch on to that. It's it's fairly obvious without being obvious with a capital O. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think it, I think that it, it is also a large larger result of that setting of of Beverly, Beverly Hills divorce divorce yeah. country and and divorce law. Like plastic surgery is mentioned at one point. It's you know it's just I, the environment. I mean, yeah, I mean it's constant. It's what it, it's pretty much <laughs> what Marilyn's friends do to pass the time is pack yep. plastic surgery. Yeah, just 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 like a hobby. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't dislike it. I'll say that first of all, it, its best feature is its cast and its performances by you, far. You also film. mentioned uh, the score, which is uh, once again. By Carter, Carter Burwell, which is sort of a standard, uh, very, very, very standard uh, Hollywood um, orchestra, orchestral in, yeah, instrumental yeah. score, but uh, but it, I mean it's good. Um, yeah, it works fine. Yeah, it it delivers on the moments. It delivers on the sweeping kisses um, that yeah. uh, that Catherine and uh, and George share. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, crescendos in, in parts and builds a little bit yeah. and stuff like that in the big moments. So it's effective and it works. I just think the prob- one of the main problems with this film is so much of it is by the numbers for the Cohen standard. The script, right. although in parts is good, a lot of it isn't that good. A lot of it is just there to push the narrative forward. The editing for the Coens is really just to drive the narrative forward. There's no flair. Cinematography for the Coens is I wouldn't say by the numbers but you know it it does what it's there to do and that's that's a fair enough description so I just think in 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 terms of everything overall the most impressive thing here is the performances of the cast Jenkins is fantastic as Freddie Clooney and Marilyn are great as the leads they have chemistry Shedrick the Entertainer is great as Gus you know Um, there's so many characters in this 
Herman is excellent. There's so many characters in this and side characters, which you'd expect with the Coens, which are great. They're fleshed out. They're funny. But a lot of the other stuff struggles a bit. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, I agree. I, I, it, the film is definitely inconsistent, and it's not. It's definitely not on the level of the other uh, Coen brothers. It is. It is shallow, but it's popcorn entertainment more so than it is than, than the than the art house stuff that we've gotten from the Coens uh, up to this point. Even even yeah. even uh, counting uh, Raising Arizona and Hot Sucker. Uh, it's just a really weird, interesting kind of choice to go with after her brother, because her brother... Is, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the man who wasn't there, because the man who wasn't there is this stylish, pulpy film noir that has just outstanding cinematography and structure and writing. And there might be a few nitpicks I had with it, like the narration, but as as a, as a, um, a visual um, kind of... Just a... a just the way to shoot a film noir visually, it succeeds it's, where so many other films don't. Whereas this, it's also one of those Cohen films that just gets better every time you watch it because you pick mm. up, keep picking up on stuff and keep seeing stuff that you didn't pick up on on the first time. Whereas um, this, I think you you can watch once, you can enjoy it as as a, as a comedy. You can yeah, and I mean the the repeated viewings when you know the twist that is coming, you can pick up on a couple of things, but 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 it doesn't repeated viewings aren't rewarded in the same way they are for a lot of the others because there isn't the same depth here no there isn't no there's definitely not the same depth but you'll enjoy the characters so i i'd recommend you seeing it if you like romantic comedies you like silliness you want something which is maybe a bit more complex than the average romantic comedy in, in hollywood terms in studio system terms but i wouldn't recommend it for anyone expecting anything other than a pretty surface level Standard by the numbers romantic comedy. And of course, also, if, if you're a guy, uh, watch it because um, Catherine Cena Jones has read and looked more beautiful. If you're a girl, George Clooney, uh, fairly dashing with the glistening white yeah. teeth. Um, yeah. So uh, so there is definitely some some appreciation there as well. Some attractive standouts. Yeah. For both. Genders. I mean, so also some like so, some of the co costume designs, some of the dresses Cena, Cena Jones gets mm. in this are, are remarkable as well. And she walks down the stairs in the casino with the um the poodle or whatever it is. Yeah, in in the red dress, yeah. Red dress, yeah. Or when she's walking away in that glimmering, shimmering golden one, yeah. Okay, so I I give it an iffy recommendation. It's not a film that I would recommend for me probably again, um because it's just lacks that depth for me and, and the typical Coen Brothers flair. But if you're a romantic comedy fan, watch it, give it a go, enjoy the characters. What are we covering next? Because I think it's Lady Killers, right? And it is. the other one, which is... It is. Considered which is a little bit that's the one that, to me, is, is the weakest one uh, and the okay. one that I have the most trouble connecting with. Um, still, it's a, it's a movie that, that does have um, a collaboration with T-Bone Burnett on its musical tracks, uh, which uh, is, is evident throughout the film and is probably one of its strongest aspects. Um, also has some pretty pretty decent performances, um, but uh, but yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to sort of get reacquainted with that film because I haven't seen that in in a while. Um, what uh, genre is it? Uh, it's a comedy. It's it's based I, uh, it's based it's basically a remake of the old Ealing Studios comedy with Peter Sellers oh, oh, and Alec right, Guinness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I I kind of thought it might be, but I, I know it's like it's another film that had too many screenwriters, wasn't yeah. it? No, I don't. I don't believe so. I, oh, I, think, I think this is this is straight Cohen's uh, okay. Cohen Brothers. Okay. Well, I look forward to it. Um, Tom Hanks is the lead in this, isn't he? And Tom Hanks, yeah. Me. Also, uh, J.K. Simmons, also a very oh, notable brilliant. character in it. Um, and uh, and yeah, th those are probably the two big ones. Like, it doesn't quite have an all star cast. It is mostly like minor side characters. Um, but uh, but. But there are once again a lot of uh, solid character actors uh, getting getting the chance to really sort of um, sink their teeth into Cohen characters. Okay, well let's see if also, I can get into a comedy. <laughs> also, notably, a Wayans brother. Okay, <laughs> I don't know whether that's good or bad. I've seen well, we'll we'll okay find out performances and very bad performances. So yeah, we'll find out. That'll be an interesting one. Okay, well that's been this week's last edit podcast. Um, we've got plenty to come still from the Coens, obviously. Um, 
we we might even get to the the one they're about to release kind of towards the end of the year well um, joel we, is anyway yeah joel is. We, and we might end up just connecting with it or if not we'll do it just afterwards but talk to us in the comments have you seen intolerable cruelty what do you think of it do you agree with us about many of the elements we've talked about what are your favorite characters do you enjoy this as just a standard romantic comedy and did you expect more now i've been citizen sleeve and i've been silver hawkins and this has been the last edit take it easy until next time take care